Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to chapel. You guys excited this morning? Oh, yeah. I'm going to start a new something today. Everybody that has a birthday in March, please stand. Let's celebrate the birthday people. And, and I do have a special shout out since I do know today is one person's birthday, Mr. Trent Dixon. Go ahead, why you do it? Do a quick happy birthday. Oh, and, and our speaker's birthday is, is today too? March. Hers is in March as well. Those of you that are interested in dates, you might want to take your devices out so that you can capture some of these dates. I have a lot of announcements today, and they do include some dates. From the Academic Advising Office, March 28th is the last day to officially drop a class and receive a W. Please make sure you contact your advisor and talk to them if you need to drop a class. You guys do know that Spring Fest Founders Week is coming, right? Okay, so we have lots of activities coming up. Today, immediately following chapel in this auditorium, we will have a financial workshop with Thrivent Financial. Um, this is something that Dean West has worked really hard for, so please make sure that you stay around after chapel to talk to Thrivent so that you can have some smart money goals and develop a good budget. Let's see, okay. This next thing, so we wanna celebrate some student athletes. So we have several student athletes who either got all conference or something within the conference. So I'm gonna call their names. I don't see some of them out there, but we will do it anyway. First team all-conference for volleyball was Ms. Kennedy Harris. Second team all-conference was Ms. Michaela Johnson. Y'all not gonna clap for y'all people? Second team all-conference was Ms. Cooks. Thank you. Honorable mention was Ms. LaCroix. Ms. LaCroix. I always mess her name up. Um, and the Red River Conference has a, an award called the Champions of Character. So for the volleyball team, our camp champion of character was Miss Alea Vines. In soccer, champion of character was Mr. William Cortez. And the women's character, champion of character was our own Miss Gonna Calvis. I'm sorry, I just messed that up. Stand, 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 you're here. Men's basketball, freshman of the year, Mr. Richard Lemboye. First team all conference, Norris Williams. Honorable mention all conference was Mr. Richard Lemboye. Champion of 
character was Mr. John Harris. All tournament team was Mr. Jason Thirdkill. Third kill. Women's basketball, second team all conference was Miss Allure Lofton and Miss Sinai McPherson. Honorable mention, Miss Sydney Bowen. And the champion of character was Miss Williams. So you guys should have gotten a couple of emails from Dr. Braswell. By the way, by the way, by the way, by the way, you guys know that when Mr. Braswell started, he was Mr. Braswell, but last Friday, a week ago, he's a newly minted doctor. Stand up, Mr. Braswell. <laughs> Dr. Braswell. And I had an opportunity to, to watch his defense. He did a stunning job. Okay, so on April 3rd, you guys should have gotten a thing, an email last night about Quinite's Got Talent, right? We need you to participate. We need all of you that have talent. There are some of you, I'm, oh, I see who I'm looking for. There are some of you who sing in the hallways. Um, but then want to act like you have talent. Dr. Bradley, by the way, I have a name for you. Um, but there are some of you who sing in the hallways and sing in other areas. There are some of you who do some other things. Some of you have a lot of talent. So we want to showcase that talent during Founders Week and Spring, Spring Fest. So please respond to the email that Dr. Bradley sent out. We would love to have you come and showcase your talents. We do have prizes. And they aren't trophies. That's all I'll say about that. And then um, on Thursday, you guys should have also gotten a save the date, and then you should have also gotten another invite um, about the student gala. You guys aren't excited about that? What is wrong with y'all? So, I know some, I, there have been some students who've expressed that they do not have their fit. So, on Saturday, sometime around between 12 and 1, I will be taking the first 15 students who sign up on a shopping trip. I'm not buying. I'm not buying. I need to make that clear. I'm not buying. I'm just driving. So, if you do need to go pick up some things, when the sign up goes out, the first 15, but we will have another trip on Thursday, potentially another one on Friday, because I wanna make sure that those of you who need whatever you need, that you have everything that you need so that you can come and dress, dressed, dressed, because this is gonna be a really good event. How many people love basketball? Okay, so also during Founders Week, we are having a three-on-three -three tournament in the Tiger's Den. Sign up should be going out shortly. I think it's probably gonna go out today. So each team has to have at least one female. Each team has to have at least one female. That, means, that doesn't mean that you can't have a team comprised of all females, because you can if you'd like, but each team must have at least one female. So be looking for that. Um, already said about Quinn Ice Got Talent. So make sure that you um, respond to the Quinn Ice Got Talent. Oh, and you should have also, in, in response to the all black affair, you should have also gotten a ballot so that you can nominate people, students, faculty, staff for awards. So once we tabulate those, then we will send out another ballot that you will actually be voting for people for different things. So this is not only, it's also an awards, we're celebrating you as students. So make sure that you are filling those out. On that Sunday, April 7th, we in conjunction with the Alumni Association will be going to St. Paul AME Church. So we will be leaving around 10 a.m for that. There will be a sign out going out for that as well. The We Over Me Farm. Let me see, Patrick. We Over Me Farm on April 20th, they have a farm fest. 
It's a community event, so please make sure you go out. There will be lots of activities out there and lots of things going on, so make sure that you go and do that as well. And then the Sunday, closing out Founders Week, Dr. Bradley will be sponsoring a gospel concert featuring featuring the PQC choir and a number of other people. So please make sure you come out and support. Um, at this time, I am going to call our Miss Paul Quinn pageant coordinator, Miss soon to be Dr. Amber Holmes Turner, so she can do the introductions of our Miss Paul Quinn contestants. Oh, I forgot one thing. I'm sorry. Come on up. Here. No, 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 no. Go to other way. Go to steps. That's the um, April 6th. We're having Future Tigers Day. We'll have probably about 250 students on campus who are prospectives who are looking to come to Paul Quinn. So we'll be having a number of activities. So we need all of you to come out. We'll also be having, I think, the various Greek chapters will be here and they might do a stroll off or something like that, I'm told. There'll be a barbecue lunch. There will also be raffling some iPads. You have to be present to get an iPad though. They will be giving away iPads. Yes, ma'am, all you have to do is be there and register. Huh? I said iPad. Saturday, April 6th, between 12 and 1.30 on the sub patio. So if you're interested in an iPad, show up, show out. That is all I have. Good morning. Okay, I am going to introduce the three young ladies that are vying for the title of Miss Paul Quinn College. Um, I'm gonna start with Kayla Webster. So Kayla Webster is a junior here at Paul Quinn College. She graduated last year from Panola College with her associates in general science. She is also a part of the women's basketball team. And once she graduates from Paul Quinn, she plans on pursuing a career Welcome, Ms. Kayla Webster. Good morning, everyone. Hope you all are having a good morning. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I'm so excited to be participating in this year's Miss Paul Quinn. This has been like a very good journey. I'm having fun getting to know my two other components. Love y'all. Uh, so for the running of Miss Paul Quinn, if I am honored with the opportunity of becoming Miss Paul Quinn, I would like to use my platform to help build up the school life here. And I do plan on partnering with the Student Life Experience Office to help organize and develop ideas to help fund school spirit here, maybe funding for a cheer team, trying to get more life and excitement for the students here and making your experience here at Paul Quinn better for everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Kayla. Okay, so now we have Daiza. So Thaisa is from Rio de, Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. She moved to the United States five years ago by herself, looking to better, make a better life for her family. At Paul Quinn College, she's a junior majoring in business management. She's a corporate communication intern and a social media manager for the work program and the soccer team. She plays for the college women's soccer team and it is her honor to be the captain of her team. Her goal is to open a company to help international citizens and also work for as a freelance market agent for multiple companies. As a Christian, she wants to be a young leader and a missionary. Let's welcome Thaisa. Good morning. Hey guys, my name is Thaisa. Um, 
I'm so grateful to be running for Miss Falkwain. And whenever I got here last fall, and when I was looking to come to Falkwain, um, I didn't saw any websites about the athletics and in Instagrams or about the work program. And to be honest, Paul Quinn was my last, last option. Um, I'm from Brazil. I don't have my family over here. And now I have you guys as my family. And when I say family, I, um, when I say family, we take care, we protect, and we do everything. If you give me this opportunity, I will make sure to follow Ito's wheel for me and stand beside you. My first project is going to open one website for the athletics and one Instagram. I want to do interviews after the games, um, game, uh, game night, um, and did some flyers so I can, I can have all the sports as a family. And my second one is going to be for the work program. I already, I'm a manager for the Instagram, for the work program, and I wanna keep more better communication with you guys because I know you guys have been complaining about the communication. I want to help you guys know how to dress up, to go to the business, and with all that. And yes, thank you guys, I hope you guys have a good day, God bless you all, and yes, thank you. Thank you, Thaisa. And our last uh, delegate from Ms. Paul Quinn College is Mia Espinoza. She's a junior from Dallas, Texas, majoring in health and wellness, and as our Ms. Paul Quinn candidate, uh, as our Ms. Paul Quinn candidate, Mia embodies the spirit of leadership and dedication on this campus. As a candidate for Ms. Paul Quinn, her passion for service and community makes her a stellar represent representative of our college community. Let's welcome Ms. Mia. Hello everyone, my name is Mia Spinoza. I'm a junior from Dallas, Texas, majoring in health and wellness. And I'm one of your candidates for Miss Paul Quinn, Miss Paul Quinn College. Being here at Paul Quinn, I have been given the opportunity to be involved and demonstrate my leadership skills. I am one of the founders of AMP Media, one of Paul Quinn's first media work program. I am a student athlete here on the women's soccer team. I serve as a co-president of the Paul Quinn Primary Care Project led by UT Southwestern, showcasing my passion for healthcare advocacy and service. I support my fellow Quinnites as a residential assistant. I'm also a member of the SSS Student Successful Services where I'm proud to say I'm a first generation student. If given the opportunity to be Miss Paul Quinn College, I'd work on boosting school pride by planning fun events that bring our diverse students' body together, showca showcasing my school spirit. I would work to bridge the gap between SSS and traditional students by creating mentorship programs, collaborative workshops, and social activities to foster a sense of community and understanding. I would push for more ways to communicate and provide resources to make sure every student feels supported, no matter where they come from or what they are going through. My goal is to cultivate a campus culture where every student feels a sense of belonging and has access to the resources that they need to thrive academically, socially, and personally. Together, let's build a strong, more inclusive culture community where every student voice is heard, valued, and empowered. Thank you. and Miss Mia. Today after chapel in the CAF, they're going to have individual tables set up where you can ask them more questions. Voting will, the way the pageant works is 50% of the vote comes from you guys, the staff and students of Paul Quinn. The other 50% comes from the pageant, which will take place at 5 o'clock on April the 5th, April the 6th, I'm sorry, April the 6th in the Grand Lounge. Okay, so I, I challenge you guys, go to the CAF meet with them, ask them questions, because one of them will be the next representative for Ms. Paul Quinn College for a year. So if you have any questions, make sure you check them out, okay? Let's give God praise this morning. 
Come on, let's give God praise this morning. All of y'all that are glad that you're alive, just stand up and give praise. Come on, every student. Come on, let's give God the honor and the glory. He's worthy of the praise. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm glad you showed up this morning. I didn't think you were coming, but you know you was getting a grade for this. Amen. All right, one more time. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise today. You may be seated. This morning, we're going to have the mother and daughter team sing for us this morning. Y'all clap for the mother and daughter team. Praise God, praise God. 
Good morning, everyone. My name is Mahaley. My name is Mahaley Rose, and I will be reading the Old Testament, Psalm chapter 143, through verse 4, New Living Translation. I am losing all hope. I am paralyzed with fear. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Egypt Mitchell, and today I'll be reading the New Testament. I'll be coming from Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23. And it reads, let us hold tightly without wavering to the hope we affirm, for God can be trusted to keep his promise. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm Kristen McGillroy. I'll be reading the quote today. The quote here is by Dr. Martin Luther King. We must accept finite disappointment, but never lose infinite hope. Thank you. Let's remain standing for prayer. How many have a prayer need? How many need God to do something for you this morning? All of y'all have a great prayer. Just lift your hands. Family prayer, lift your hands. Let's bow in a word of prayer. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able. Father, this morning in chapel, we will sing of the goodness of God. You have been so good. Lord, touch us this morning in chapel. It's all about you. It's not about us. We thank you and we praise you. I ask you to touch every student, God as they get ready um, to do finals and mid everything they've been doing, God, their grades, God, touch them in the name of Jesus, God. Touch every um, teacher on this campus, God. Lord, we thank you for our president, President Sorrell, and thank you for every administrator. Touch all the staff, God, and we give you glory and honor this morning in the precious name of Jesus. Touch our speaker today, God. In the name of Jesus, we pray, Lord. Amen. Let's give God a big praise this morning. Praise. Open your mouth and say something. Give God praise this morning. Hallelujah. You may be seated. This morning we're going to have a selection by Egypt Mitchell this morning. Will you all clap for her today?
Good morning, everyone. You guys know me, Miss Angela Belton, one of your counselors, and I'm here to introduce our speaker, the wonderful and sorrow, Minister Alice Ward. Miss Alice E. Ward, she's a licensed professional counselor and a licensed minister, uh, and, a, and also a licensed professional counselor supervisor. She is in the mental health profession and seed planter for the kingdom of God, guiding individuals into discovering and rediscovering the masterpiece that lies within. She enjoys helping individuals construct, renovate, redesign, and renew their mindsets. Alice uses everyday experiences through the word of God, scaffolding and allegorical concepts to assist individuals with living a transformed life. She holds a Bachelor's of Arts in Political Science from Grambling University and a Master's of Arts in Counseling from Dallas Baptist University. Alice has been serving, educating, advocating, and counseling as a practicing licensed therapist for 15 years. Her diverse experience includes working with foster care at risk youth and teens, juveniles, college students, young adults, adults, women, and families. She's currently the owner and private practitioner of Transformation Begins Within PLLC. Her mission is to assist others with mental health, wealth and health, transformation, healing, wholeness and wellness. Alice is also a published author and licensed minister. She's a member of Westside Baptist Church in Louisville, Texas, under the leadership of Pastor Delvin Atchison. She was a Sunday school teacher for over a decade. She has mentored girls, young women, and women for almost two decades. She loves all things pink and all things creative. <laughs> she enjoys teaching, writing, mentoring, and sharing my, her wisdom, insight, and knowledge with others. Two of her greatest honors are being a big sister and an auntie. In her free time, she enjoys spending time with family and friends, reading, learning new things, traveling, and painting. She's a member of Psi Theta Omega Chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. Excuse me. She's a commissioner for Christian Lives Commission with Texas Baptist. She's a board member of Excellent Teen Choice, Big Brother, Big Sister, Greater Dallas, and Seedbox Global Minister. Let's give a hand and welcome Ms. Alice Eward. Thank you for that introduction. How y'all feeling on this morning? All right, all right. I'm gonna need y'all to wake up for me. I know it's still early, but I need y'all to look alive, all right? To the president of this fine institution, to the dean of students, faculty, and staff in Quinite Nation, it's good to see you again. In 1988, the Reverend Jesse Jackson ran for a, sec a second unsuccessful term for the Democratic nomination for the President of the United States of America. And in his speech, he gave this phrase, keep hope alive. But Reverend Jesse Jackson was not the first to speak about keeping hope alive. In our scripture that was read today in Psalms 143 and four, the Psalmist David penned these five words, I am losing all hope. So just for a few moments, I wanna talk from the subject, keep hope alive. Hope is a feeling of expectation. Hope is a desire for a certain thing to happen. Hope is a feeling of trust. Hope is to cherish a desired outcome with anticipation. Can anyone besides me relate to David on today when he says I am losing? all hope. David knew like most what it was like to be discouraged, depressed, overwhelmed, desperate, and in despair. And in a world where digital connections seem more important than divine connections, we may find ourselves in a place of hopelessness. We're living in some troubling times. Have you ever been in a place where you just wanted to give up? 
You just wanted to call it quits. When you look at your relationship, when you look at those grades that are going to be coming out pretty soon, have you ever been in a place that you felt like things were not going to turn around for you? There are many reasons people might lose hope. One may be they have experienced a lot of pain and suffering, and they don't think things are going to get any better. Another reason may be they have tried to change their life, and it has not yielded any favorable results. As people, we live in this world, and we will experience circumstances and situations at times that may cause us to lose hope. And we have to be reminded to keep hope alive. David was in a place of hopelessness, and some scholars say it was because King Saul was after him. Other scholars say it was because his son Absalom was trying to kill him. But whatever the reason is, one thing is for sure, David was in crisis, distress and danger. He was losing all hope, and he was paralyzed by fear. But in his place of hopelessness and paralysis, David called on the name of the Lord. What or who do you turn to when you're hopeless and in a place of fear? Oftentimes, people with a mental illness find it hard to keep hope alive, especially when every waking hour is filled with hopeless thoughts, and even at nighttime, you can't seem to shake those depressing thoughts. And some people may even say, why keep hope alive when we live in a dark and depressing world? A report says black young adults, more than white young adults, Asian American young adults, and Hispanic young adults have the highest rate for depression. It is also said that black people are least likely to reach out for mental health care. It often leads us to be undiagnosed with major depression and untreated. But I have some good news for you. Within the last 10 years, young adults have been seeking out help for their mental health issues. They have been unlearning some of the things that they have learned, and they want to be well mentally, and that is good news. It is natural to feel hopeless when someone is experiencing a difficult time, and I don't know about you, but from time to time, I've had to have my hope restored. I know what it's like to pray and pray and pray some more. I know what it's like to get on my face and seek God. I know what it's like to fast. I know what it's like to see God doing it for everybody else but me. I know what it's like to throw in the towel and God also to throw back the towel to me and say, I'm not finished yet. I learned a little song when I was a little girl that says, he may not come when you want him, but he's always on time. So whatever you do, don't give up on God because God won't give up on you. But just in case you found yourself in a place of hopelessness, I want you to remember these three things. I want you to take some notes on today. The first thing I want you to remember is trouble don't last always. It's essential to remember that your situation is not permanent. No matter how bad it seems, things will eventually get better. If you look in verse 5 of Psalms 143, David says this, I remember the days of old. I ponder your works and I think about all you have done. Whenever you find yourself in a difficult season, I want you to reflect on the goodness of God. Because the same God back then is the same God right now. The second thing you can do if you find yourself in a place of hopelessness is have a little talk with Jesus. We used to sing this song that says, have a little talk with Jesus and tell him all about your troubles. He will hear your faintest cry, and he will answer by and by. And when you hear a little prayer wheel turning, you'll know a little fire is burning because just a little talk with Jesus will make it right. If you find yourself in a place of hopelessness, remember that trouble don't last always and to have a little talk with Jesus. But the third thing I want you to remember is don't forget to ask for help. Always remember that God is a very present help in a time of trouble. And when we share our feelings with each other, that helps us process them and we can become less overwhelmed. God has put people in your life 
them. The Bible says that we are to bear one another's burdens, thereby fulfilling the law of Christ. Yes, life will get tough, and life will also cause you to become contemplative, and life will cause you to want to give up by the intensive and insurmountable weight of disappointment and discouragement. But I just stopped by to tell somebody, keep hope alive. Jesus knows how much you can bear. You have to build your hopes on things eternal and hold to God's unchanging hand. Sometimes when reality doesn't seem to match our dreams, we can be heartbroken. And I know at least 10 people in here now is already considered dropping out of college, but don't you do it. You've already contemplated other ways that may be more profitable than staying in school, but I count to tell somebody stay in the race anyhow. And I want you to hope when the odds are stacked against you. Hope to believe that when everything inside you is telling you to give up. Hope to keep praying and pursuing when you're lost and need direction. Hope to continue despite not having all the answers. Hope to keep praising Jesus through the pain. In this life, you will lose a lot of things, but whatever you do, don't lose hope in God. The Bible says, for I know the thoughts I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not evil, and to give you a future and an expected end. Weeping says, I mean, hope says weeping may endure for a night, but only one night, though, because joy will come in the morning. And when I look back over black history, despite being oppressed, depressed, and suppressed, we continue to believe a change is going to come. The one common thread that I see from one generation to the next is hope. Hope is our anchor. And an anchor on a ship usually is not very large in size and it may often seem insignificant until times of storm. You need an anchor. I just stopped by to tell someone you need an anchor. You have to make sure that your anchor grips and holds the solid rock. And that rock is Jesus. He is the one. He will make your life brand new. He will take good care of you. The Bible tells us that in this life, we will have trials and we will have tribulations. But be of good courage because Jesus has already overcome the world. Some people hope in materialism, but my hope is in the master. David says it like this in Psalms 20 and 7. Some nations boast of their chariots and horses, but we boast in the name of the Lord. Some people's hope is in their education and credentials, but my hope is in the author and the finisher of my faith. Some people's hope is in their family lineage and name, but my hope is in the name that's above all name. My hope is in the one who was and is and is to come. I don't care how dark it gets. I don't care who leaves. I don't care how tough and tight it gets. I want you to keep hope alive. And I just pulled up to tell somebody your dreams will come true, but until they do, keep hope alive. Dr. Martin Luther King says that we must accept finite disappointment, but never lose infinite hope. In a country where funding is continuing to be reduced in our public system, we have to keep hope alive. When racism is on full display and narcissism is at an all-time high, we have to keep hope alive. When white privilege is running rampant with no accountability, we have to keep hope alive. The legal system would rather prosecute a Fulton County's district attorney than prosecute the former president of the United States for his demagoguery and misogyny. We have to keep hope alive. When states like Florida and Texas and North Carolina and North Dakota and Tennessee and Utah pass anti-DEI laws to remove DEI programs from college campuses, we have to keep hope alive. When white supremacy no longer wears hoods but parades their face and their pernicious propaganda in these streets, we have to keep hope alive. When hate is running amok like a wild beast, we have to keep hope alive. When right is called wrong and wrong is called right, we have to keep hope alive. When school systems and libraries are removing books about black history, we have to keep hope alive. When they continue to try to erase the very existence of our being, we have to keep hope alive. When the court can decide what a woman can and cannot do with her body, we have to keep hope alive. When you apply for that position that you know you are qualified for, but they give it to someone else with meager experience, you have to keep hope alive. 
When you love someone, they don't love you back. You have to keep hope alive when your money becomes funny and your change becomes strange. You have to keep hope alive. When you get ready to take those final exams in the next few weeks, you need to study and keep hope alive. When life becomes more bitter than sweet, you have to keep hope alive. And I just came by to encourage someone to lay your hands on yourself today. I want you to put, put, put your hand out, put your hand out, lay, lay it on you, lay it on your heart. I need you to tell yourself these words. It's turning around for me. Yes, I almost lost my mind, and I have lost some things, and I have lost some friends along the way. And I feel like things are not going to work out in my favor. But by faith, I want you to claim that this is your turnaround season because sooner or later, it'll turn in your favor. It is turning around for you. Hebrews 10 and 23 tells us like this, to hold tightly without wavering to the hope we affirm for God can be trusted to keep his promises. The Bible says he that's begun a great work will complete it. The final words of Reverend Jesse Jackson that he said in that speech in 1988 goes like this, wherever you are tonight, you can make it. Hold your head high. Stick your chest out. You can make it. It gets dark sometimes, but morning comes. Don't you surrender. Suffering breeds character, and character breeds faith, and faith will not disappoint. You must not surrender. You may or may not get there, but just know that you are qualified. And hold on and hold out. We must never surrender. America will get better and better. Keep hope alive keep hope alive keep hope alive but that's not the reason that I keep hope alive the reason I keep hope alive is because one day when I was lost he died upon the cross and I know it was the blood for me that way back on Calvary, Jesus shed his blood for me and his blood continues to give me strength from day to day. And his blood still reaches to the highest mountains and that same blood still flows to the lowest valleys. It's his blood that gives me strength from day to day and it will never lose his power and because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future and life is worth the living just because he lives. Whatever you do on today, you got to keep hope alive. God bless you. Come on, let's welcome... Pastor Williams. Come on, Dr. Williams. How many are going to keep hope alive this morning? Amen. Where's the mic? Patrick. Come on, everybody, let's stand. Everybody, let's stand. Everybody bow your heads. Focus on what we've heard today as it relates to hope. Just the fact that God has given us another day of life above ground is a reason for hope. The Bible says, hope maketh not a shame that the Lord has not given us hope for us to be ashamed of it. But he's given us hope that we might deposit hope into someone else. Anybody lift your hands for a moment? Just lift your hands. Lord, just another day, we're grateful for what you have given us. 
for what you've already taught us and for what you are doing and will continue to do. Our hands are lifted now, Lord, not because we have been so good and righteous, but because it is our way of saying that everything we have comes from you. I ask a blessing now upon this campus, blessing upon these students, this faculty and staff, and may our today be better than our yesterday, and yesterday even better than our tomorrow. Thank you for every day of sunlight, every day of rain, <clears throat> because everything good comes from you. And now as we get ready to leave this place, we pray that you would go with us and that you would place angels in our car to keep us safe, that you would put Michael in the front seat and Gable in the back, and that you will send an entourage of angels around us to keep us safe in everything that we do. Bless these students, their homes and their families as they are away from those they love and those who love them. Keep them safe. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. There will be no chapel next week. Next week, no chapel next week. I need to see all choir members up front real quickly for three minutes, all choir members. All choir members.